Welcome to A Watershed Moment, the community media program that celebrates the rivers and connected lands forming the natural circulatory system of our region. The health of these watersheds is intricately tied to that of the humans who live here and affect them. So we invite you to come along as we explore the natural landscape, observe the wildlife, and share the beauty minutes away from our homes and daily commutes. This series will introduce you to the organizations and to the passionate volunteers, organizers, recreationists, athletes, and scientists who work tirelessly to sustain and improve these watersheds. Welcome to a Watershed Moment. I'm Charlotte Pierce, the host, and we're here with our special guest, Amber Christofferson. Mm -hmm. um, she's the Greenways Director for the Mystic River Watershed Association. And the Mystic Greenways Initiative that she'll be talking about will connect 25 miles of paths, improve hundreds of acres of parklands, and engage thousands of community members from the Mystic Lakes to the Boston Harbor. This high quality network of greenways for active transportation and recreation will enhance climate resiliency, provide sustainable mobility, and improve physical and mental health outcomes for the communities along its path. So, Amber, I know that uh, Mystic River Watershed Association formed the Greenways program in 2016. And can you tell me a little bit more about why this program was started and the elements that are incorporated. Sure, yeah. yeah, I'd love to, and thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, and tell us a little bit about yourself, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, the, the, star, the story of the Greenways has to do a little bit with my personal background. Mm -hmm. I am a long-distance runner and a cyclist, and I live near the Charles River, and that's where I train. You can run for dozens of miles uh, along the river and never leave the edge. Uh, mm -hmm. When I discovered the Mystic River, it was a disconnected network of paths. There were a lot of starts and stops and dead ends. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought to myself, why, why is this the case? And at the same time, the Mystic River Watershed Association decided to start a new program, the Greenways Program. And just for those of you that are not familiar with that term, we think of Greenways as half parks and half, half active transportation. Mm -hmm. So it's all about people-powered people mobility and access to open space. Um, and so when we started this, we thought, why doesn't the Mystic River have access to these open spaces and to the river in the same way the Charles and even the Neponset has. So that's where we began. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's fairly common knowledge that a lot of health outcomes are determined by where you live. And we wanted to make sure that people that live within the Mystic River communities have access to those amenities that make people healthier. Mm -hmm. Um, when we started five years ago, we were thinking a lot about community health. Now we're thinking a lot about two important topics, which is climate resiliency and equity. Um, so we're working to direct resources to environmental justice communities to reverse these inequities and access to open space and make safe places for walking and biking. Um, climate change is at the forefront, as we all know. Mm -hmm. We're working regionally through the Resilient Mystic Collaborative to think about climate impacts at a regional scale. As you know, water, transportation, they don't see boundaries, they don't see town lines. Um, so right. we're trying to bring together the 21 cities and towns for a cohesive- So yeah, I was gonna ask you how yeah. many cities and towns. So it's 21 and, cities yeah. and towns. We're trying to make a cohesive network mm -hmm. of parks so that there aren't dead ends yeah. and, and paths. And also look at mitigating heat island effect and flooding, which also have regional components. Sure. and. You know, in the last year and a half, we've had this pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know I personally relied on the Mystic Parks to, yeah. you know, to walk my dog, to get out. And uh, do you, did you find a lot of people were using this system more during the pandemic? Yeah, or? absolutely. Um, uh -huh. First of all, you know, Urban parks are an essential part of 21st infrastructure. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a nice to have. Parks are critical. And the pandemic just made that even more clear. Yeah. Um, Massachusetts state parks, the ones that are managed by the Department of Conservation and Recreation, saw a 300% increase in usage, oh. particularly as several other private parks were closed. Those parks remained open and people yeah. flocked to them. I noticed um, that. <laughs> so, you know, which also creates other issues of yeah. trash and maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that the state 
continues to invest more, not just in creating and transforming new parks or existing parks, but creating new ones and making sure there's long-term maintenance and plan. Right, cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, it was, it was really a good mental health you know, outlet to yeah. have during the last year. And that and was whatever it said. You can be safe to recreate outside. Yep. You can social distance outside. So it became yeah. such an important part of our community. Exactly. And um, maybe we can put the map on the screen and we can show people what we're talking about. Um, the uh, Can you tell us a little more about the state of the projects yeah. in the Greenways program and what, you know, a few of the highlights from those? Sure, yeah. So, um, of the 25 miles, when we began in 2016, about 13 of those miles were complete with a few miles in progress. Mm -hmm. And in progress essentially means that the path or park is somewhere in the planning, design, or construction phase. So that can be a long period of time, but it means there's something happening to um, create a new project. Um, as of 2021, which is five years later, we've completed 16 miles and we have seven miles in progress. So that's, we feel like really great about that outcome and where we're going and the momentum and demand for these spaces. Um, we've also helped to raise funding and in the last five years have raised $7 million mm -hmm. for capacity, design and engineering and capital funding, which is kind of the three components of yeah. how you get these projects and built. And do you have a big event or do you have corporate sponsors that come in and donate? Yeah, them? yeah, we have many sponsors that are corporations, um, state grants, uh -huh. federal grants. Um, we do a lot of partnering with agencies and municipalities. Um, so we want to involve all kinds of stakeholders from the community to business uh, yeah. to agency and state. Well, it sounds like it's going very well. I mean, that's yeah. That's a good progress, and the, the funding is essential, I'm sure. But um, could you just highlight a couple of these and give us a sense of how you work, you know, how you, you look at the big picture, then you have to implement the details. Yeah, and the, yeah exactly. Know. The vision is somewhat simple. It's just connecting all of these spaces mm -hmm. along the river, and implementation is much difficult, more yeah. difficult. <laughs> uh, I like to joke that it's like I'm working on 10 different puzzles, and they all yeah. have lots of pieces that work towards completing it. Um, I'm going to talk about a few projects. The first is Malden mm -hmm. River Works, okay. which is on the Malden River. It's part of uh, the Malden River Greenway, which is a plan we did in 2017. And this is a five acre parcel on the Malden River in Malden. Okay. And um, it's going to create a new waterfront so park in Malden. Yep, one. it's where there's that um, mm -hmm. little gray dot there. Got it, um, yeah. And we're going to redesign the Department of Public Works, which is on site, and carve out a public space for a park along the river. So we think those two go together. A lot of times people think, a DPW can't be next to a park, but actually they're the ones that are going to maintain the park. They're the ones that are responding to climate resiliency issues. Mm -hmm. So we think it's actually a great opportunity. Um, and right now the site is has a lot of contamination and it's not uh, serving the river well. So mm -hmm. by putting in this new um, acre and a half park, we're going to have a new boathouse, a river walk, native plantings, and at the core of this project is equity and resilience. We have a steering committee of local communities of color that are driving this project and created the design. And um, we want to make sure that it's climate resilient from a flooding perspective, heat perspective. And again, like investing in the Department of Public Works, not yeah. trying to displace that, but saying let's support the people that are maintaining our city and maintaining yeah. our park space um, and making sure that site is um, functioning well environmentally. That spirit of collaboration is just critical. It's yeah. Just there are half a dozen partners, Friends mm -hmm. of the Malden River, MIT is a partner, mm -hmm. the City of Malden's a partner, Got it. Mystic River Watershed Association. Uh, there's probably a few I've missed, but yeah. it's just on that one project. We will put them in our uh, notes about the, the episode yeah. if you want to include anything. Um, yeah, as far and we've as raised about a million dollars in funding to get to a 75% design, and we're going through permitting, and we're hoping to start construction in 2023. Well, that's coming up soon. Yeah. And then you have the Mystic River Pedestrian and Bicycle Bridge in Somerville. Yep, yep. So this is a really critical regional uh, gap in the network. Um, the Northern Strand Trail I like to describe as the Minuteman of the North. The okay. Northern Strand just saw millions of dollars invested by the state to connect 11 miles from mm -hmm. Everett to Lynn, all the way to the North Shore. This bridge is where that path ends and then will connect people over the Mystic River into Somerville and then into Boston. So it's the connector of all North Shore communities, the off-road yeah. connector with Boston. It's so, also one of the biggest missing gaps in the East Coast Greenway, which yeah. is a 
many thousand mile greenway along the whole east coast and, and there will be like bike access yep, along that whole it'll thing? be a bike sounds pedestrian. like a long distance bicycle person might be exactly <laughs> and, and it serves both <laughs> short and long-term yeah. travel because it's just people that want to get from everett to somerville or vice versa well a lot of times in that area a bicycle is a easier or right. faster way to get around. Right, right. <laughs> and I think people are realizing they'd rather be on a bicycle and get there quicker than sitting in traffic. Exactly, so, yeah. Um, it also will connect to the Assembly Row Orange Line. So wow. similar, in the similar way that the Minuteman connects yeah. to Alewife and Got it becomes it. this kind of hybrid transit with bikeway uh, transportation network. So that's really exciting. Um, that's 75% designed as well. Um, there's a federal grant out right now. We're waiting to hear back to see if we'll get some money right. from the federal side of things. That's a much, that's a very large project. I don't want to quote the price incorrectly, but around it's, 30, 40 million. Wow, yeah, um, well, so. best of luck in um, that one. And then we have a little one here yeah. in uh, Wellington Park in, yeah. in Arlington. We're in Arlington Community Media right now. So yeah. we wanted to, uh, ask you about that. What's yeah. going on with So that? Wellington Park is along a stream in uh, Arlington called Millbrook, which is just a stro stone's throw away from here. Yes. Uh, Millbrook is a several mile uh, corridor that uh, empties into the Mystic Lakes. Um, and it has a really interesting history within uh, Arlington as a mill town. You know, there were seven or eight different mills that went through there. Right now, it's kind of a hidden waterway because mm -hmm. part of Millbrook is above ground, part of it's piped underground. So we've been working with the town to increase access to Millbrook, improve the ecological quality, and try to address some of the flooding concerns with Millbrook, which yeah, we know it does there are many. Swell up. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. Uh, so runoff, yeah. right now, we're finishing up our second phase of construction for Wellington Park, which is a town-owned park. Um, off of Grove Street, where there's a number mm -hmm. of tennis courts, so all of our work is kind of behind that. Um, used to be overrun by fencing, invasive species. We cleared those out. People can now walk along Millbrook. Mm -hmm. We put in a boardwalk. A uh, rain garden's being built right now. Um, we're working with a local artist to do a natural play area for kids. Um, tons of native plantings. We also have a flood storage area that absorbs flooding from Millbrook when there's storm events. Yeah. So we're thinking all of these components are coming together as far yeah. as recreation access, you know, walking and biking, flood resiliency, mm -hmm. ecological quality with more native plants, less invasive plants. So we're excited about that project and it's great to see. That's awesome. Stuff built. I, yeah. I'm going to go check out some of these areas and um, you, you've been talking about, but it seems to me like, you know, you need the detail people and then you need the the vision, you know, you need to have those things kind of right. working in tandem. And can you just go through some of the uh, guiding principles that you use in realizing this vision for the Greenway? Sure, yeah. So there's three mm -hmm. ways we think about our work. Mm -hmm. I've touched on some of them. You know, the first is that we are trying to catalyze projects to be built mm -hmm. to get to that 25 miles. And the way that we do that is we apply for grants, we bring in funding to try to get initial concept design and engineering going okay. so that we start the path towards implementation. The second thing that's really key is engaging and empowering communities, yeah. um, making sure there's public support, but also hearing mm -hmm. from folks. What do you want to see here? What's a good park yeah. for you, for your families, for your friends? Um, what are some mobility challenges you have? So that's important. And then the third thing is also just very hugely critical is partnering with cities yeah. and towns and agencies within Massachusetts because mm -hmm. we certainly cannot do it alone. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're trying to connect those community voices with um, landowners and that that side of things. Got it. So. Yeah. And do, I mean, there must be different people in your organization. Can you just? mention a few of them that you, you work with that have different skills and you sure. mentioned someone who's sort of the vision person and yeah. I was interested in that. Yeah, yeah. So we have a small but mighty team. Yes. Um, we have a development team, which is essentially our fundraising. So helping yeah. us bring in grants, helping to fund my mm -hmm. time and other folks' times. I work with community and engagement staff members. So mm -hmm. they're helping me to get out to meetings, host public meetings, do events, do rides, all of these things yeah. that connect us to residents on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then I work with a number of folks in our climate resiliency department. Because again, it's like climate resiliency is parks. Like parks, mm -hmm. trees, that is going to mitigate flooding. It's going to provide shade in the summer. 
it's absolutely critical to being climate resilient. So yeah. those are some of the folks I work and, with. And you have a large volunteer component too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so can we, we just call up the Mystic Association and yeah. volunteer? Yeah, we have right. a volunteer page. You can sign up to get involved. Sweet. We have a lot of stewardship activities between mm -hmm. April and October okay. uh, where you can get out and actually help pull invasive species, mm -hmm. uh, clean up the parks. Um, we also have volunteers that count fish. I haven't even talked about the herring migration that happens in the Mystic. Yeah. Maybe that's another. Andy. Andy Hersina. Hersina. He was our on our, our okay. uh, first episode, uh, and he, he he's like, he's, you know, so articulate. Oh, yeah. He has a wealth of knowledge. And he and just, he loves those alewife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I like to say that Greenways is similar to the environmental work that yeah. Mystic Rivers has been doing for decades, yeah. you know, which is like, you know, sometimes environmental work was narrowly focused on creating habitat for fish, mm -hmm. for birds. And I'm saying with Greenways, it's the same thing. You yep. want to create a place where people want to be. You have to have benches. You have to have shading. There has to be safe paths for people to walk and bike. Yeah. Otherwise, people won't come out. It's right. the same thing with the fish and the birds. So we're trying to support the wildlife and the people of the watershed to... Got it. Yeah. And make the most. So yeah. as far as the next couple of years, like what are like four main things that you want to see accomplished? Yeah. Well, I think um, the, the projects that I spoke about, Malden River Works, yeah. the pedestrian bridge, those are huge priorities for us that we hope can get funded and built. Um, we have a number of other waterfront projects. There's um, four projects that come to mind. One you can visit today, which is River Green Park in okay. Everett. It's right off the uh, minute. Sorry, not the Minuteman, the uh, Northern <laughs> Strand Trail. Got it. Um, that was recently, we're doing a whole shoreline restoration. There's new paths along the river. This mm -hmm. is all as of two years ago. Prior to that, this was owned by GE, and there were airplanes made on site. So people have not have had access to the Malden River in Everett for over 100 years, until two years ago. So you can get out today, That's go amazing. to River Green. Yeah. There's like athletic fields, there's pavilions, there's benches, there's walking trails. Um, so that's really exciting. The other project that's open, or sorry, complete but not quite open, is what we're calling the Seawall Project, which connects Draw 7 Park in Somerville to Route 99 in Charlestown. It bridges the Somerville-Charlestown line, city of Boston. Um, that is uh, a really exciting project that has been in the works for many years. A lot of these projects are probably five to seven year timelines. Mm -hmm. so when and something gets done, you're really excited. When they, uh, your, you had mentioned was the clipper ship connector. I'm not sure yeah. what that is. Yeah, the clipper ship connector. Um, that was the main project I started on when I oh, began okay. here in 2016. I actually yeah. kind of was involved with it before that, so it's Does been it six ships? years. <laughs> it's um, referencing back to the history of the clipper ship ships yeah. that were built on the Mystic River in Medford. So oh. this is going to connect Medford Square with the rest of the path system downstream oh. towards McDonald's Park. It's only 0.4 miles, but it's very complicated with land ownership and contamination. But once yeah. that's done, there's going to be 10 miles of contiguous riverfront access. So Will there be a museum? By yeah, I know. <laughs> Will there be a museum? We, we need a museum to commemorate all the work we did on it. <laughs> yeah, um, right. But that was another example of partnerships were key. We worked mm -hmm. with the state DCR. Mm -hmm. We also worked with local groups from Medford, the Bicycle Committee, Walk Medford, our organization to do the community outreach and try to get the funding and all these pieces, so. And before um, um, that, before we, we wrap up, I wanted to ask you, um, all this community collaboration and all these town meetings you have to go yep, to, yep, all, yep. is there any, like, do you ever have like just really big opposition to something you think about or you want not, to do? You know, not often. Yeah. Um, because people are clamoring for more paths, for more parks, especially in yeah. light of COVID and yeah. everyone realizing the magic of being outside, yeah. in addition to just it being safe in the pandemic context. Um, you know, every now and then you kind of have someone that like lives right by the path and yeah. they're a little hesitant to have more traffic near their house, but almost every case of someone being concerned about that. Once the path or the park is in, they're like, oh, Ooh, well now I have access to it because I live right here. Yeah, I good. like to count, yeah. so part of my commute is I bike from Cambridge to Arlington and I go up the Minuteman path. Mm -hmm. And I like to count, so from Alewife to Kickstand Cafe, mm -hmm. essentially like, you know, t center of town. 
I like to count to see how many people have created gates from their backyards <laughs> to the Minuteman because a lot of those people did not want the Minuteman yeah. path. And now they're they, like psyched that they're on the Minuteman the path. So it, I think yeah. it's just... And it seems like the people, industries too, you know, they realize the sort of community value, the public relations, if you will, you yeah. know, value of supporting something that's so positive. Right, yeah, right. So. In fact, Minuteman's kind of been a victim of its own success. It's so crowded now. I know. It, it, people go so fast. I know. So it's, that's another thing we're trying to think about for the yeah, future. Yeah, I'm but, sure, yeah. Yeah. And finally, before we close up, um, can you tell me what your favorite place to bike or walk along the Mystic Greenway system is? Yeah, well, one thing that's a favorite place, but also kind of a secret Play, it's not exactly secret, but a lot of people don't know about it, is okay. the Malden River. Okay. I talked about two projects on the yeah. Malden. Um, the Malden River is three and a half miles of shoreline mm -hmm. between Bedford, Everett, and Malden, okay. almost equally shared. And what makes it really unique, it's one of the few riverfront path systems that's not next to a highway, like Storrow Drive, 93. So it's quiet, and there's quite a bit of wildlife you can see on the Malden River. There's wetlands. Um, the only downside is it doesn't completely have contiguous access. We're working on that. Okay. But about 75% yeah. of it is open. Sometimes you have to kind of go back to the street and come yeah. back. It also runs alongside the Northern Strand Trail. Yeah. So from there, you can get all the way up to the ocean yeah, on that, an off-road path. That's definitely one that I, I, I would like to check out. Yeah. I, I'll take your advice on that. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. We, have, uh, we will continue this series and We'll have you back, um, any of your scientists, yeah. you know, people like that. We'd love to, to ask and explore all aspects of, of the watersheds, which are the pretty much the circulatory system of our lives. Exactly, there exactly. Well put. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Nice having you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, yeah.